And moreover, it was pushed away from the sun by some mysterious force. So I put the possibility of a technological origin on the table. So when you look at the sky at night, what you see are hundreds of billions of stars. Actually, the total number of people that lived on Earth throughout the past few million years is 117 billion. So there is a star in the Milky Way for every person who ever lived on Earth. <laughs> and uh, there are a trillion galaxies like the Milky Way within the observable volume of the universe. That's the distance that light traveled since the Big Bang, 13.8 billion years ago. And we know that there is no cliff outside the cosmic horizon. In fact, if there was a cliff closer than 4,000 times the cosmic horizon, we would notice it in the relic radiation from the Big Bang. So just take 4,000 cubed, 64 billion times more galaxies than we can see, at least. So thinking that we are alone is arrogant. But humans tend to be, uh, to feel a sense of self-importance. We started by thinking that we are the center of the universe, the physical center. And Nicolaus Copernicus and Galileo Galilei used data to argue otherwise. And obviously, the church was not happy about that. Eventually, 1992, the Vatican admitted that Galileo was right. But it was two decades after we visited the moon. <laughs> Now, one way to find out, I mean, traditionally, for about 60 years, we've been searching for radio signals. That is a method pioneered by Frank Drake. But it's just like waiting for a phone call at home when you are lonely. Nobody will call you, perhaps. Another approach, which I think is, is better and was just made possible over the past decade, is to look for objects in our backyard that came from outside the solar system. And we haven't had the ability to detect those until the last decade. Astronomers discovered the first interstellar objects. And what I'm engaged in is checking whether they are all rocks from other stars, or maybe among the rocks there is a Tesla Roadster car, like the one that Elon Musk launched in 2018. Perhaps he is not the most accomplished space entrepreneur since the Big Bang. And we need to check in order to find out whether we have neighbors, because you know, we might find those packages even after the sender is dead. It's very different from uh, searching for radio signals. And the first reported object from outside the solar system was Oumuamua, was given this name because it means a scout in the Hawaiian language, and the telescope that discovered it in October 19th, 2017, was in Hawaii. And this is just an artist illustration, uh, but what we saw is a point of light that changes brightness as a result of reflecting sunlight by a factor of 10 every eight hours, and that meant that the object had an extreme shape, most likely flat, pancake-like. And moreover, it was pushed away from the sun by some mysterious force without showing any evidence for cometary evaporation. No gas or dust around it. And so my colleagues argued it's a rock of a type that we've never seen before. And I said, how do you know it's a rock? Now, to me, that's a continuation of my childhood curiosity. I, you know, I, I'm just wondering uh, about all possibilities, like Sherlock Holmes, you know, as a detective, put all possibilities on the table and ruled out one by one, and whatever remains must be the truth. So I put the possibility of a technological origin on the table, and the scientific paper was accepted for publication within three days, but then as soon as the media got attention, my colleagues got really upset and started pushing back very strongly. And to me, that's a sign of a psychological response, jealousy to the attention that such a subject gets, we should not pay attention. We should just be curious about what comes to our backyard and figure it out. 
And the artist illustrated it as a cigar, but in fact it was most likely flat. And that was the first one. And it could have been a light sail pushed by reflecting sunlight, very thin object, maybe a surface layer of a bigger structure, or maybe a piece of a broken megastructure, Dyson sphere around another star. Who knows? We just need to get more evidence because science is based on data, on evidence. It's not a belief system. And of course, if you think you know the answer in advance, you will not learn anything new. So Enrico Fermi, a Nobel laureate physicist, sat at lunch about uh, 70 years ago in Los Alamos. And they were talking about extraterrestrials. And he said, where is everybody? In his Italian accent. Um, I mean, but Enrico Fermi didn't even seek the evidence. He didn't build a telescope. He was just asking, where is everybody? As if they will come here, they're really interested in us. I don't think so. In fact, if they are intelligent, they will try to avoid us. <laughs> And people often argue that extraordinary claims require extraordinary evidence. Well, first, I think it's extraordinary to argue that there is nobody as smart as we are. I think it's the other way around, that <laughs> it's much more ordinary to imagine that stars like the sun with planets like the Earth, roughly at the same separation, would give birth to something like us. And second, there is no extraordinary evidence. All you need is evidence. That's the way science is done. And if you argue that extraordinary evidence is needed and that you don't have time to pursue it, you're not promoting scientific knowledge. So don't express an opinion unless you're willing to put the hard work into the search. And this is a lot of work. Elon Musk himself said, uh, I haven't seen any evidence for aliens. We have the Starlink satellite, 6,000 of them around the Earth, and not, none of them collided with an object from an alien civilization. I did a simple calculation and calculated that, you know, uh, even if you put uh, an object the size of a person in a low Earth orbit, uh, just at the same altitude as the Starlink satellites, it would take a thousand years for one of these satellites to collide with it. And we all know that to search for something, you need to build instruments that have the abilities to detect it. We invested $10 billion in the Large Hadron Collider to find the Higgs boson. We invested $10 billion in the Webb Telescope to find the first galaxies and stars in the universe. And so extraordinary evidence requires extraordinary funding. And without that funding, we will not find much because new scientific knowledge does not fall into our lap. So as I mentioned, over the past decade, um, we had this new frontier in astrophysics, finding objects from outside the solar system. We know that they came from outside because they're unbound by gravity to the sun. They move too fast to be bound by gravity to the sun. The first actually was a decade ago, and we discovered it with my student. Uh, it was in a catalog that the US government compiled of Meteors, these are objects that collide with Earth as it moves around the Sun. And this meteor was moving so fast that, in fact, it was moving faster than 95% of the stars relative to the Sun in the vicinity of the solar system. And moreover, it exploded in the lower atmosphere of the Earth, so it had material strength tougher than even iron meteorites. It was weird. And what are the chances that the first two objects, this meteor, half a meter in size, and Oumuamua, roughly the size of a football field, would look so weird? I mean, even if there are rocks, both of them, we will learn something new about the neighbor's yard by studying them. So to me, it's an opportunity to learn. It's actually very intriguing, and that's why I put a lot of my time into this. And as I said, the Oumuamua was discovered in 2017. And then the third one was a comet. It looked just like the comets we find in the solar system. And a colleague of mine said um, two things. One, he said, Oumuamua is so weird, I wish it never existed. <laughs> Which to me illustrates how science should not be done. Because you should be curious and excited when something unexpected shows up. 
but to many experts it's a threat to their stature because they base it on their past knowledge. And the second thing that was said uh, is, you know, if this comet looks natural, just like the comets in the solar system, which are covered by ice that evaporates when it comes close to the sun, doesn't it tell you that all the other objects like Oumuamua or the meteor were natural as well? And I said, well, if you walk down the street and you see a weird person, and after that you see a normal person, it doesn't make the weird person normal. So the US government discussed objects that military personnel report as unidentified, they cannot figure them out, they see them in multiple instruments, pilots, intelligence agencies, satellite imaging. Much of the data is classified, uh, but the Office of the Director of National Intelligence delivered three reports to the US Congress, and they led to the establishment of a new office in the Pentagon. And I actually met <laughs> the director, her name is Avril Haynes. Uh, she got her bachelor's degree in, at the University in, of Chicago in physics. So I told her, Avril, we speak the same language. Uh, you had training in physics. What do you make of these objects? And she said, I don't know. And I believe her. I think the government is not the organization which is supposed to tell us what lies outside the solar system. Their day job is national security. What lies outside the solar system is my day job as an astrophysicist. To continue watching this video, click the link in the top left or in the description below. Or visit iai.tv for more debates and talks from the world's leading thinkers on today's biggest ideas.